violence and other kind of violence. What's good cyberspace? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Right now, New Orleans residents are growing increasingly concerned as crime continues to rise. A crime expert is warning that if the violent crime wave in New Orleans is not slowed down, residents could start to leave for other cities. Woo! So just like there is a mass exodus in California, it looks like there's going to be a max or mass exodus from um, New Orleans as well. And that's not going to be good for Mardi Gras. That's not going to be good for all of the, all of the other um, attractions that they have, like the French Quarter and Bourbon Street and whatnot. So it, it's going to look really ugly um, out there in New Orleans. You know, you can't just have these super gremlins just running amok in the city and they're expanding into other territories as well it's not just in the hood anymore so people are starting to feel it and people are sick of it you know you can't even park your car in your driveway without somebody trying to get up under it and and jug some or they just busting your windows out and going in your car just like that in a subdivision with a cul-de-sac so it's gotten bad under mayor Latre uh, latoya Contreras' leadership you know that sister is running the city into a ground wdsu reporter eli brand has more tonight dr peter sharf a criminologist with lsu school of medicine said this is a trend he saw post katrina but this time it's for a different reason. Also had the opportunity to speak with someone who has been touched personally by violent crime about his thoughts on people leaving the area. I thought about moving back there years ago, um, probably five or six, maybe seven years ago, and I'm glad I didn't. Adam McFall left New Orleans years ago, but still feels the effect of the city's violent crime wave. Yeah, and this is where um, the rapper, what's that boy name? Jada Youngin. New money, old money, keep calling. <laughs> This keep calling. That's what that's where he got gunned down at. And they're going to call that white flight. Oh, it's white flight. He's running away just because it's, you know, black people moved in the areas and black people are in po um, political power. So now it's just white flight because they don't want to come back and they're moving away. This is the real. This is like the 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 red pill of what white flight is, okay? Because, <clears throat> and it's sad to say, but once you have a host of the super gremlins moving into the neighborhood and then they bring in a cousin them and now they running up into your house. It's that bad, you know, and we have to change that. We got to change that and that's, something that we have to do internally because they're it looks like they're willing to give the city of new orleans away people are just moving out completely and going to other parts of louisiana or maybe even moving out of the state completely so <clears throat> what i think is going to happen they're going to um they're going to surrender the city you know they're going to surrender the city and you know, it's going to be a circus for a long time, maybe a 10 year period. Then they're going to, you know, knock everything down and gentrify it. And then it's going to be the same cycle going back and forth. But <laughs> I hate to call it like this, but this is just what the pattern is. It seems. And like I said, it's something that we got to deal with internally in order to maybe change this trajectory. But I'm afraid that that's where it's going. I mean, you have people getting shot who attend, you know, LSU. That was a big deal. It was swept under the rug, but it was a big deal to the locals. I mean, just go back to the video. 
Um, I think her name was Allison Rice, right? She got clapped. Go back to that video. Look in the comment section. This locals in the comment section. Locals saying, oh, that's not happening. And then this local saying, yo, like we scared. So <laughs> you really have to pay attention to what's going on in New Orleans. Number one murder capital um, per capita in the United States. So just let that sink in. If his father, Scott Toops, was shot in uptown New Orleans in mm. July. My dad was very fortunate to make it out of this incident with his life. It's violent crime like what happened to McFall's father that has LSU criminologist Dr. Peter Scharf concerned about something called crime migration. New Orleans has some of the highest murder rates in the nation and has various other violent crime stats on the rise. There's no indication that in fact we've gotten a hold of the crime problem. So as long as we have 20 per month uh, rates of murder, people are not going to want to be here. They're... 20 murders per month let that sink in that's 20 bodies 20 bodies sheesh find some place that's safer dr sharf says one of the biggest issues is the lack of officers within nopd a department funded for well over a thousand is operating with around 900 sharf says stopping violence won't just keep people here it will keep officers too. We need a strategy to reduce murder, and that's going to be our top priority. And one of the benefits uh, of a reduced violence rate is uh, increased stability. For Toops, having family here makes him want that work done soon. It's the city that's loved by the people. It's for the people. And it's a city loved by the nation. And myself being my hometown, I really hope something is done and something changes. For the Toops family, it's not all bad news right now. Scott was able to leave the ICU recently and is recovering well. He was even able to speak to his son on the phone for the first time since July. Mm. Reporting Eli Brand, WDSU News. After standing defiant, New Orleans Mayor LaToya Cantrell has changed her tune, saying she will pay back the city for about $30,000 in travel upgrades. <laughs> they put the pressure on Mayor LaToya. They put the pressure on her. They was like, uh-uh, you ain't finna get away with nothing. The way you got this city run amok and you defending these super gremlins who carjacking people, we not finna let you get away with nothing. So they put the pressure on her. She says she finna pay back the money. I bet she wish she wouldn't have spent that money on them, them damn plane tickets now, huh? I bet she wish she would have, you know, flew coach. We first broke that news to you today at noon and Erica Ferrando is joining me in the studio with the latest on this story that we've been following for months now. Erica. Hey, Katie, in July, Channel 4 obtained documents that showed how much Mayor Cantrell was spending to travel. She would upgrade her flights to first class or business class, costing the city tens of thousands of dollars. Wow. And see if so if just think about it like this, if that's what she spent on the flight, what do you think she spent on the hotel? See me, I would probably, you know, cheap out on the flight. Yo, let's get the cheapest flight that we can one way. I don't want to do a, you know, delay or anything like that. Lay away, whatever. One way, boom, cheapest flight that we can. And then, you know, get a four star, maybe five star hotel, something like that for the time that I'm traveling. But that's the most I would do. But she just like, yo, first class and oh, boom, five star hotels. It's like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I think that's a complete abuse of power. Just this year, but after questions by city council members and an opinion from the city attorney, the mayor said she's now making plans to pay the money back. As it relates to the uh, thorough review of our policy by the CAO and the law department and keeping it much on that policy, not uh, embedding anything relative to the emergency declaration. Bruh, she, she's real good at talking around and, and using all these big words to make herself seem smart. It's like, I get it, but just say you're going to pay the damn money back. Due to the policies that are in the assignments of the insurrection and January 6th and like, come on, bro.
Washington. I am, in fact, uh, deemed an employee of the city of New Orleans. And as an employee of the city of <laughs> New Orleans, Mayor Latoya can try. Wow, she just now realized that she's an employee of the city. She just now realized that she works for the people. She works for the people of New Orleans. She just now realized that. Wow, that's scary. That's scary. <laughs> what did she think that she ruled the city? Did she think that everybody just works for her and then and 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 the people of New Orleans are at her beck and call? Like what is she on? This is a power trip like no other. That oh yes, in fact, I am a employee of the city. What? <laughs> the emergency declaration i am in fact uh, deemed an employee of the city of new orleans and didn't she take an oath to serve the people of new orleans this is crazy as an employee of the city of new orleans mayor latoya cantrell announced tuesday she will have to follow city policy which means her flight upgrades will have to come out of her own pocket Ooh. documents show the mayor has spent about thirty thousand dollars in first and business class tickets this year on behalf Mm, so she thought she was going to cap this year. No, you're taking a hit. And then there was another brother that they paid out like um, $3,500, something like that for, I think he worked, it was either five weeks, seven weeks, something like that, maybe seven days. I don't remember. But um, they they getting funny with the money. See, that's this is what the community do. Unfortunately, it is not good. I don't, it doesn't bring me joy to say this, but look at BLM. What are we doing with the money? Like, why is it not adding up? Behalf of the city. She previously argued the upgraded flights were for her safety and she had no intention of paying the city back. <laughs> That's not what she argued. She said that flying coach was unsafe for black women. She said it's unsafe for black women to travel unless they're traveling first class. That's what she said. All expenses incurred doing business on behalf of the city of New Orleans will not be reimbursed to the city of New Orleans. One thing is clear, I do my job. But Friday, the city's chief administrative officer, Gilbert Montano, said Cantrell would have to pay the expenses back after a city attorney issued an opinion that the mayor is a city employee and has to follow the city's policy, which states employees are required to purchase the lowest airfare or pay for the upgrades themselves. Turns out that that is applicable to her. And in all candor, I have to fulfill my duties as, as the CAO and ensure that those uh, rules and responsibilities are effectuated to everybody. City yep, run your pockets, Mayor. Run your pockets, Madam. I bet she gonna fly spirit next time she hop her ass on a plane. City Council President Helena Moreno previously threatened to cut the mayor's salary next year if she didn't pay the money back. Mm. She was in violation of, of the policy. So I'm glad that she'll be uh, repaying the city and that we can work to put this behind us. It is very clear that business was done on behalf of the city of New Orleans. However, I will have to re reimburse the city for those business expenses. And so I'm moving forward to do that the good news is as a she's acting like she is running her own business or something and if she's trying to act like the city of new orleans which we know the city is a business in in you know in all but as if she's like the ceo of some <laughs> she's trying to act like she's like the ceo or some sh it, it, it's crazy like, ma'am, you're really not doing nothing. And if you if you were the CEO, you're running the city into it. You're running the business into the ground. That's what you're doing. Things aren't getting paid on time. People getting shot, carjacked in the street. You showing up to somebody, you know, baby kid hearing, defending them. After they done robbed and carjacked three white women. <laughs> it's not looking good. As I've said, work done on behalf of the city of New Orleans. 
Now it's still unclear when the mayor will pay the city. We don't know if she will have a payment plan or what kind of timeline she'll have to. No, not a payment plan. Mayor, you ain't got the cash. You ain't got it on you. Oh, I ain't got it right now. <laughs> she tried to pull one it up. I, I ain't got it right now. Well, I hope they give her a high interest rate. Paulo Gilbert Montano said Friday they were working on that. All right, Erica, thank you so much. I'm here on the corner of MLK and Frederick Douglass where a shooting just took place. And as you can see, it's a pretty rough area. So I'm basically risking my life reporting on this madness. So make sure you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Like the video, hell, share the video. And make sure you go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. I'm Jen Quavius Jackson here live reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGZM News 17. Safer than it's been in a long time. Staff city is safer than it's been in a long time. Staffing uh, numbers are staggering, as you know, not only in New Orleans, but across the country, which pushed me and forced me to make every single roll call uh, within our police district, eight districts. Wow. So she really said it's safer than it's ever been. This is the mayor. At least keep it a buck with us. Say we're doing our best. It's a difficult job. There's low morale on the police force. People are resigning. People are going to other cities that support them more. We need to do more to support the police so that they're incentivized to protect this great city. But no, more excuses. Uh, both 7 a.m., 7 p.m., listening to our officers. It really pushed me even further, I would say, to make sure that our platoon officers that are on the streets get the adequate support again on the street. Uh, if my officers are safe, then the citizens of New Orleans can be safe. Uh, but we're seeing a spike in domestic uh, crimes and violence. Um, yeah, we're definitely seeing the domestic thing tick up everywhere in all these major um leftist run cities we're seeing that yeah because what's happening is i don't know but it seemed like thug dudes their their sexual market value just went through the roof after the george floyd situation so now a lot of sisters are i mean they was already dating the pookies and ray rays but now they're really doubling down on that and like oh yeah i need me a scammer i need me a drug deal i need me a no nine to fives like that thing has been doubled down on like that ppp money got the streets in a frenzy and it's lingering um even with the indictments and biden saying oh if you took a loan and you're gonna pay it back or we're gonna find you we're gonna get you whatever even with him saying that even with him saying that it's some some people are still riding that high Okay, some people are still riding that high. Some of these super grooms threw it back in the trap. So they still eating off that. They might even have the bread to pay it back. So you never know what you, it's a mixed bag with this. But what I will say is, um, you know, the mayor, she's, she's not doing a good job of keeping the city safe, ultimately. And that's the issue. She's trying to say, oh, it's domestic. It's not really, you know, all overall crime. It's a ticking to just domestic. That's what she's really trying to do. Oh, let's focus on domestic because it helps women. And then you're going to realize that, oh, well, it's a lot of women who are offing their children and offing their significant others as well. So, I mean, if we add up the times that one of these super gremlins offs his his girl or shoots or his girl or whatever to the times where these you know super sister gremlins are offing their kids and you know doing it reverse back to the men i don't know what that'll look like but and i'm not saying it'll even be close but it'll definitely um narrow the gap there violence meaning uh it's it's less a random but more people who know people, people hurting uh, people uh, in our city that spike absolutely uh, since COVID-19. We had a... Uh
So they're blaming it on the pandemonium. Okay. Zero uh, jury trials for over two years. Uh, we had an issue uh, with our district attorney um, uh, relaxing cases. Yeah, and Jason Williams is the district attorney, so she's blaming it on him. Um, he actually was under tax fraud investigation for a minute, so that um, definitely had his attention. And, you know, he wasn't charged with anything, but the, the white woman that he was in bed with was charged. So that's a little, um, I guess it's reverse racism, if we will, right? Where the brother got off and, you know, the Karen had to do some time in community service, at least. Uh, or, or not even accepting cases. Uh, we had courts uh, closed, as I mentioned, but we also had the impact of COVID-19, a domestic violence. There she goes, saying the the pandemonium again. Violence clearly are on a rise, and, and we're just seeing it even spikes uh, in juvenile crime as well. But addressing it head on is what the city of New Orleans is doing. Uh, we have seen firsthand uh, that we are a model police department for this country, constitutional policing practices. Wow. The, 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 I mean, it's crazy she can say that with a straight face. Uh, no doubt about it. We are training other departments. So the department of the past is no longer. Our focus is on community, uh, making sure that our officers are on the ground, but officers who are commissioned that were not assigned to patrol are back on the streets. And so that is making sure that we're visible and we're seeing the results every single day since making these changes. So the best is yet to come.